So this is problem 1.6. And this problem, we have a tank filled with air. And we are told that the air within the tank is at an absolute pressure of 680 kilopascal. And a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. The volume of this tank is 1.35 cubic meters. And the question is, what is the weight of the air inside this tank? So we are given a tank with air on it. We are given the pressure of the air, the temperature of the air, and the volume of the air. Now, technically, we're given the volume of the tank, but remember that air is a gas, and gases expand to fill the container. We're asked to find the weight. Now, in order to find the weight, we need to know the mass. But there is nothing here that tells us what the mass is. So instead, we're going to try to find any property that can relate mass to one of these three givens. So can you think of a property that relates mass to one of these three? Uh, volume. OK, volume. And what's the relationship between mass and volume? What is that property called? Uh, density. Yeah. Density. So we know that density is equal to mass over volume, which means that if we find density, we can find this mass. And if we multiply mass times gravitational acceleration, we can find its weight. But now the thing is, we want to find something that relates my pressure and my temperature to my density. And that is where the ideal gas law comes into play. Now, the ideal gas law tells us that for perfect or ideal gases, right? So perfect gases or ideal gases are those that follow the relationship between pressure and temperature and density of P, pressure, equals density, gas constant, temperature. Now, what do these terms represent? In this equation, my P is my absolute pressure. My rho is my density. My R is my gas constant. And my T is my absolute temperature. Now, on my week two video, I go over the ideal gas law. And I'll explain a little bit on the video where the gas constant comes from. So you can look at the video if you want to have more details about where the gas constant comes from. But for now, what we do need to know is that each gas has a gas constant associated with it. And that gas constant, as you can see, has units of temperature and mass and other units, right? Because it has units of temperature and mass, um, the gas constant does not depend on a gas's temperature, which means that it is a value that is valid for a particular gas, in this case air, at any temperature. So what we can do now is we can look up the gas constant for air. The book has an appendix at the back, and in that appendix we have several properties of fluids, and one of those properties is the gas constant. So the gas constant for air given in the book is 286.9 joules over kilogram times Kelvin. Now this tells us a little bit. I like to see this units, and I want to focus on these units because these units will tell us a little bit about the units that these numbers are supposed to be in. Now, first of all, we know that the pressure is an absolute pressure. And thankfully, we're already given the pressure of the gas in absolute terms. So the absolute pressure, we know, to be 680 kilopascal. Now, here's the problem. See that the gas constant is in joules, not kilojoules. So because the gas constant is given in joules, I'm going to try to express this pressure in pascal, not kilopascal. So 680 times 10 to the power of 3 pascal. And a pascal is nothing more than a newton over meter squared. Okay. This pressure is equal to 
the density of the fluid. Now, we don't know the density. It is our unknown. But hopefully, we can use this ideal gas equation to solve for this density. Multiply by the gas constant, which we are already told is 286.9. And now let's look at those units. We have joules over kilogram times Kelvin. And what is a joule? Does anybody remember what a joule was? Uh, what's it, uh, energy? Mm -hmm. And what, what SI units can we use to create a joule? So force times distance, right? Mm -hmm. And what is the SI unit for force? Uh, newtons. And distance? Meters. Okay, so 286.9 newtons times meters divided by kilogram times Kelvin. I want you to be careful with the temperature here. We're dealing with absolute temperatures. And if you don't remember absolute and relative scales, then go back to my week one video where we talked about them a little bit. But right now, even if you don't remember what an absolute temperature was, you can always look at your units and based on these units, what should the units of temperature be? Kelvin. Sorry? Kelvin. Yeah, that's correct. So we want our temperature to be in Kelvin. We just need to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. And the conversion factor is simply, it's not a conversion factor. The conversion is simply to add 273. This is a weird type of conversion, right? It's not a dimensionally homogeneous one. So don't get too confused. Don't think too much about the units. So just call it 70 plus 273 Kelvin. So that gives me a temperature of what, 343, is that correct? Yep. Good. So now look at what we have here. We have an equation where we know the pressure, we know the gas constant, we know the temperature. Can we solve for density? The answer is yes. So my density will be equal to my pressure divided by my gas constant divided by my temperature. You plug all those numbers into your calculator, what does that give us? Six point nine one. What about units? Let's look at everything that's happening here. Notice a couple of things. Notice that Newtons will cancel out with Newtons. Kelvin will cancel out with Kelvin. And we're left with a kilogram that moves to the other side and a meters that moves to the other side. So what does that leave us with? Um, kilograms per meters cube. Yep. Okay. But that's not what they asked us. They asked us for the weight. So if we have density, we can calculate weight, right? Because if you remember correctly, weight is mass times gravity. Density is mass over volume. There we go. I uh, don't know why we're incorrectly. So based on this expression, we can see that mass is simply equal to density times volume, and if we combine it with the weight, we get that weight is equal to mass times gravity. So we get that the weight of the gas is equal to the density of the gas, 6.91 kilograms per cubic meters, multiplied by the volume of the gas, that's 1.35 meters cubed, multiplied by gravitational acceleration, that's 9.81 meters per second squared. And this one is a little bit easier for me to plug into my calculator. So we have 6.91 times 1.35 times 9.81, I get 91.5 newtons. And that is how we solve problem 1.6. So are there any questions with this problem or with the ideal gas law in general? <laughs>